We think about the best activism is organized storytelling. And what hip hop does for black people for sure is like tell our stories. So the, the more conscious and the more active our storytellers can be, whether they're hip hop artists, whether they're authors, whether they're people on TV, the better off we all are. What I've seen happen in the past four years, the hip hop artists, rap artists specifically, are trying to just learn more about the world that we're in, how we got here, and not abdicating their responsibility to just know more. And it is true that when you know more, you do more. And I've seen so many people just like, they learn about things and they're like, wow, I had no clue. I, you know, I think about there was one artist who I took to the Cook County Jail, the biggest jail in the country. Uh, and he understood prison, sort of. And then he went to one and was like, I just didn't know, you know? And it's like, you know, he left and it changed the way he thought about the entire space. And those things are important. When I think about the playlist retreat with Jazzy Jeff is, uh, a reminder that we have to organize in all the spaces we're in, that there are way more people who want to do good work than know what to do. And being in that space, it was all these music creatives who had clearly understood the protests, who knew the issues with police violence, uh, hadn't had a deep understanding of what the fault lines were or like what they could do or, or how they could be game changers in this space. So it's powerful to talk to them, to hear from them, to be challenged, to challenge to help people think about, you know, you think about the music community, they are storytellers in so many ways. And what does it mean to help storytellers just understand how to, how to tell stories better? Like, I think that is important. So both times I was at the retreat, uh, that was my goal. Beyonce has an incredible commitment to people of color and black people. Uh, I also know that celebrities alone won't be the gateway to freedom. That the people who were out there with us in the street were high schoolers, it's grandmothers, it was grandparents, like, that's who came out in the street and put everything on the line when it was really hard. I think that Beyonce understands that she can do things that very few people can do. And behind the scenes, she's trying to do those things. I think that she has created space for a lot of other artists to do similar things. I think that we see people like Jesse Williams as another great example of like, he understands that there are things that he can do that other people can't do. And he uses his platform to do that. So when I think about uh, Beyonce following me, it's cool. It doesn't change the world. Nobody's any more free. Uh, and part of our work is like, how do we help people like Beyonce, Pharrell, Jason, to launch, like use their power in ways that only they can do. And I think Beyonce is an incredible example of that behind the scenes, Salon, Pharrell, Colin, a host of them. So when I think about Colin Kaepernick's protest in general, I'm reminded that Colin is saying basic things. Colin's saying that racism is alive and present and that's alive and present in the criminal justice system, within policing and in larger society. And that is just a basic truth. Uh, you know, Nike was slow to the party is that they have repped uh, Colin for a while and didn't do anything for the first couple of years. It's important that they supported him in this moment because too often we don't stand up and support people as they're making a sacrifice. We celebrate them years later. So it's important that it's happening in the moment. It also doesn't absolve Nike from any of the criticisms of their labor practices. It is a reminder that the Nike is making money off of this, that they've experienced that the most growth and the most sales they've had in a very long time because of Colin. And that the pressure from Nike supporting Colin in this public way actually in some ways sort of pushed the NFL to release the first statement they've ever released, even acknowledging the legitimacy of Colin's protest. So I think it is like a both and. It is a good thing and it doesn't absolve Nike of the work that they still have to do as a company. You know, we met with President Obama twice. Uh, the longest meeting that he ever had as president that wasn't national security was with us. And, you know, at the end, I said to him, you know, President Obama, you can't call people thugs. He had just called the, the protests in Baltimore thugs. Uh, and he looks at me, he goes, DeRay, you've said things on TV you shouldn't say. And I was like, yeah, but I'm not the president. You know, when I said it to him, it was just the two of us standing in this room. It's like reminding him of the power of his words and like what him calling people thugs actually did to the whole space is that it demoralized a, a set of black activists, it empowered a set of white supremacists, and that was really dangerous. And And part of our work is to take the truth with us into every room we take it into, uh, whether it is the boardroom, whether it's the classroom, whether it's the meeting with the president. Uh, so that is one of the, the moments that I remember a lot. You know, we know that being in the room is not the goal. Tell it, the truth is the goal. So we want to make sure if we're in the room that we tell the truth. We know we're not the only people who can bring the truth. So part of our work is to keep the door open as wide as possible so that the truth can just pour into the room. Uh, so when I thought about my push to him, it was like, I don't know. It would I don't know what it would be like to be from Baltimore, to be somebody in the streets and not say to him personally, like that actually hurt us. Like that wasn't a that like was a tough thing for us to hear.